on September 17th, cheetahs have been reintroduced into Indian wildlife. India welcomed eight African cheetahs from Namibia to Madhya Pradesh. On his birthday, Prime Minister Narendra Modi released the cheetahs that were brought from Namibia at the new home that is Kuno National Park in Madhya Pradesh. And by the way, this type of transfer of wildlife is also world's first intercontinental large wild carnivore translocation project. Now that is a mouthful of words. So intercontinental as you know from one continent to other. And as you know cheetahs are carnivorous animal. And they also fall under the category of large wild carnivorous animals. And since it is a translocation from one continent to another, therefore it is called as intercontinental large wild carnivore translocation project. Now let's get to know some information about these cheetahs. So as I said, they came from the country of Namibia. So as you can see, here is the African continent and here is Namibia on the western coast of the African continent. So as you can see from this map, this portion of land that is the southern as well as southern western part of Africa, here you can see this whitish patch. Now what does it mean? So basically this place has the world's oldest desert that is the Namib desert. That is the reason you can see this white patchy land and above that in the country of Angola there you can see somewhat greenish patch. So basically Namib desert is a vast cool desert. It is not a hot desert. It is a cold desert. Now when I say cold desert don't imagine this as Ladakh or Antarctica. The temperature of the Namib desert is constant during seasons but it varies significantly during day and night. Now during daytime, the temperature of this desert can go as high as 50 degrees Celsius. Whereas during the night, temperature can fall to as low as 0 degrees Celsius. And the reason the temperature of this area of this country is constant throughout the year is because of its position. It is a coastal desert. So a lot of wind and air from the South Atlantic Ocean constantly moves towards the land area. And always remember this point, any coastal region in this world will have a constant temperature throughout the year. There will be hardly any variation of temperature. So all throughout the year, that is during seasons, the temperature will be constant. There will be hardly any variation. But during day and night, you will see a drastic change in temperature. And one more thing that I said about this desert is that it is a cold dry desert. It is a dry desert because the sea in this case the southern Atlantic Ocean, the water here is cold because there is a cold current that comes from Antarctica and that keeps the water of southern Atlantic Ocean cold all throughout the year. Now this can create an almost permanent layer of fog over these cold waters and that also means the rate of evaporation is slow in this region. Now this cold air mass gets drawn into the hot desert where the air mass dries and then further it warms up the area of this region and that is the reason it causes dryness in this region and that also results in no rain. So this was a little bit of geography about Namibia. One interesting fact about Namibia is that it has the largest population of free roaming cheetahs in the world. This country is home to somewhere around 3000 cheetahs that roam freely in the country. Plus, if you look at this country, as I said, this whole country is almost like a desert. On the eastern side, you have another country by the name Botswana. Even that country is an extension of this Namib desert. So the only place where you will find some patch of greenery is in the northern part of Namibia and northeastern part. So basically this region. So here you will see that there is some greenish patch. That means there is some greenery. So in the middle of the desert, if there is some patch of greenery and then there is some water body, then that becomes a perfect spot for wildlife. After all, animals need food and water. Now let's get to know a few things about cheetahs. Cheetahs also have a scientific name and they are called by the name Asinonyx jubatus. And as you know, cheetah is also a carnivorous animal. Carnivorous animal is an animal that gets food from killing and eating other animals. But then sometimes even cheetahs or any other African cats, they also chew grass. So you can say that cheetahs are carnivorous as well as omnivorous. Cheetah is also the fastest land animal on earth and they are capable of reaching speed as high as 100 km per hour. One important question that always comes in anyone's mind is what is the difference between cheetah and leopard? 
So one of the most visible difference between a leopard and a cheetah is in the pattern and marking of their coats. While it does look similar from far away, but if you give it a closer look, you can tell that cheetahs have a round or oval shaped marks and leopards are rosettes, which means rose-like marking. Now the next question is, what is the purpose behind reintroducing cheetah to India? Why these eight African cheetahs arrived in India? So the first thing that you have to understand is that once upon a time, that is 75 years ago, even India was home to cheetahs. It is said that the last cheetah in India died in 1947 in Korea district in present-day Chhattisgarh, which was earlier part of Madhya Pradesh. And then in the following years, this species was declared extinct from India in 1952. Now the plan of introducing these African cheetah to India it was conceived in the year 2009 and as you can see it took more than 10 years for India to get these cheetahs. And the reason behind cheetahs got extinct in India is because of hunting and loss of habitat. As you know before 1947 India was home to many princely states. So it was the Rajas and Maharajas as well as the Britishers they used to hunt animals and one of them was cheetah. And that is one of the prime reason for their extinction. Apart from hunting, obviously there is loss of habitat as well. And then there is another factor that is hampering the size of their population, that is their genes. The genes of cheetahs also endanger their own survival, because cheetahs have a very low chance of reproductive success rate, which means that their species do not reproduce quite often or easily. This makes it even harder for them to adapt to different environments due to their fewer population. So these are some major reasons why cheetahs went extinct in the Indian subcontinent. Now as you know on September 17th, 8 southeastern African cheetahs from Namibia have arrived in Madhya Pradesh's Kuno National Park. And if you look at the gender, there are 5 females and 3 males. And their age group is between 2 to 5 years old. These cheetahs have arrived in a Boeing aircraft from Namibia's capital Windhoek and they came to Gwalior after completing an overnight journey. From Gwalior, they were moved to Kuno National Park in an Indian Air Force Chinook heavy lift helicopter. And let me add one more point. When these cheetahs were being transported, they were not tranquilized. So it was a safe translocation task. Now here is Kuno National Park. Very close to the Rajasthan and Madhya Pradesh border. It is around 35 to 40 kilometers away. If you can recollect, I showed you the map of Namibia. There I showed you, right, where is the greenish patch in the whole desert. The greenish patch lies in the northern and northeastern part of Namibia. And I have also said that wildlife needs water, food and a little bit of vegetation because that's where a lot of animals will be there. Similarly, if you look at the Kuno National Park, it lies in the same geographical terrain. The Great Indian Thar Desert has some extension in the southeastern part, that is, in the northern region of Madhya Pradesh. Hence, these cheetahs will have a habitat which is somewhat similar to that in Namibia. And by the way, in India, area-wise, Madhya Pradesh has the largest forest cover in the country. The forest cover is around 25%. Madhya Pradesh state of central India is also home to largest number of tigers, leopard, ghadial, vultures, and also wild Indian wolf. You will also find a lot of Barasingha or Swamp Deer. Madhya Pradesh also has the highest number of national parks in India. The total number of national parks in Madhya Pradesh is 12. Here are the location of 12 national parks. Here is Aravali Range. Here is Vindhya Range. Then Satpura Range. And here is Kuno National Park. Now the next important question is, what is the importance of cheetahs in the ecosystem? Cheetahs are the fastest animal on the planet, but we cannot run away from the fact that there are less than 7,500 left in the whole world. And always remember this one point, species and ecosystems are linked. That means what happens to one species can affect an entire ecosystem, including animals, plants and people. Now, as you know that cheetahs are apex predators, meaning they are at the top of their food chain. If we remove cheetahs from an ecosystem, then what happens is that, as you know, every animal has a prey that they feed on for their food and survival. For example, cheetahs hunt deer. Now, if the population of cheetahs come down, then obviously the population of deers will increase. 
Now you have to find out what does deer eat. A deer's diet consists of variety of crops, grasses and vegetation. That means deers are herbivores. Now if the population of deers increases, then there is going to be overgrazing. So what are the side effects of overgrazing? Soil erosion, land degradation, loss of valuable species, food shortage, famine, deforestation and loss of habitat. I have a separate playlist on environment and ecology. Go through that playlist in that there is a video on food chain and food web and then ecological pyramids. Watch that you will understand about the role of predators. So if you remove predators, in this case cheetahs from an ecosystem, then the population of those species which are supposed to be the food of these predators, they will increase. There is a term given to it, it is called trophic cascades. When you remove one animal, it affects other animals in the same food web. So let me again repeat, as predators, cheetahs control the number of prey species in their ecosystem. Cheetahs main prey are herbivorous animals. Without cheetahs, these populations grow. This can cause problems such as overgrazing, when animal eats all the vegetation. Now this can lead to soil erosion, then areas turn into desert, this affects the water cycle, which increases the chance of wildfires. And also research has shown that when a species of animal disappears, diseases can rise in both animals and humans. For example, cheetahs eat baboons. Baboons are also monkeys. So animals that eat monkeys include alligators, snakes, eagles, cheetahs and chimps. So monkeys are primary prey to these animals. And it is a well-known fact that there are many diseases that spread from monkeys to human beings. So if you see, cheetahs can control their numbers and that will keep diseases away from people. Likewise, if cheetahs population go down, then diseases goes up in baboons and monkeys as well as in people. That is why cheetah matters and they play a vital role in maintaining the health of an ecosystem. And ecosystems are linked, so if there is any change in one place, then it will have a global effect. So if you see this whole plan of the government of India for bringing cheetahs in India, it is a conservation project not only for cheetahs, but also for the grasslands that make up their natural habitat. In India, cheetah is listed under vulnerable list in the IUCN red list of threatened species of 2021. Cheetahs are native to countries including Botswana, Chad, Ethiopia, Iran, Kenya, Namibia, South Africa and Zimbabwe. In Asia, cheetahs are now confined to Iran. So once upon a time, it was also part of the Indian subcontinent. And by the way, this national park, that is Kuno National Park, is home to big cats of India like tiger, lion, leopard and now cheetah. Now just like any other project, even this project can fail. So the government of India's criteria for the project success is for the short term that includes 50% survival of the introduced cheetah for the first year. In other words, if cheetahs don't reproduce in the next 5 years or if they don't survive, then this program needs to be reviewed for alternative strategies or discontinuation. I hope you found this video informative. Thank you for watching it.